Hello, everybody. My name is Valentina Nappo, and uh, I work here as a research scientist at Dolomite Microfluidics. My role in the company is to develop new applications uh, for our microfluidic systems, uh, but also to uh, help customers uh, to develop custom solutions uh, uh, for other different applications. Uh, my latest application was on how to make PLGA core shell microparticles, uh, uh, which are widely used for hydrophilic drug encapsulation. Uh, and uh, that's uh, the topic of today's webinar. So uh, the webinar is structured into two parts. Uh, in the first part, I would like to go through a short presentation where I will explain uh, how uh, the technique uh, to make PLGA microparticles. Uh, and uh, after that, I will uh, show you uh, the system. You can see an example of uh, one of our systems here. And uh, in the end, uh, there, will, uh, there will be a Q&A session uh, where you'd be able to ask any question you have. So let's move to the presentation part. So controllable microfluidic production of core shell microparticles for hydrophilic drug encapsulation. What we will be talk about, uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce the Dolomite Particle Engineering team to you. Uh, after that, uh, we'll go through some of the technique to make PLGA monodispersed microparticles, and uh, then I will show you some uh, uh, the, our system flexibility in terms of scale up and also other particle production. So. Uh, our team uh, here at Dolomite Microfluidics is uh, composed of uh, scientists from different backgrounds who work together to develop new uh, applications and new protocols uh, using uh, microfluidic technology to make uh, nanoparticles and uh, microparticles uh, who, that uh, find applications uh, in uh, many different areas. In particular, we focus on uh, biomedical and pharmaceutical industries. However, we also undertake proof of principle studies for customers who are interested in uh, different applications. So why we decided to use microfluidics? Uh, when compared to batch technology, microfluidics enables the formation of uh, highly monodispersed uh, microparticles and nanoparticles uh, with uh, a complex structure. For example, core shell microparticles or uh, Janus particles, uh, which might be uh, tricky to obtain uh, using diff different techniques. Uh, in addition, uh, in terms of uh, drug encapsulation, uh, microfluidics enables to obtain a very high drug encapsulation efficiency when compared to batch metals, which uh, is, uh, is very important, uh, especially if you are using uh, quite expensive reagents or active pharmaceutical ingredients. So uh, first of all, I'd like to uh, explain you a little bit how to use microfluidics uh, to make uh, a simple PLG microparticles. And after that, uh, we'll talk about how to make it more complex, uh, so adding the uh, core shell structure. So let's start with a simple PLGA microparticle. Uh, PLGA, first of all, is a biocompatible, biodegradable polymer, which is widely used uh, in the pharmaceutical industries and is also approved by the FDA. Uh, in particular, uh, this uh, PLGA can be used for uh, uh, hydrophilic and hydrophobic drug encapsulation. And the purpose of uh, this is to uh, obtain a controlled release profile of uh, your drug. And for hydrophilic drugs, uh, this is achieved by uh, creating a PLGA microparticles, which has an aqueous core where your active pharmaceutical ingredients uh, can be dissolved. And the, while the PLG shell protects uh, the uh, API uh, from uh, dissolving too quickly, and so it actually control the release of the drug. So 
Here you can see a schematic uh, of our PLG macroparticle uh, production process. Uh, in particular, this process uh, can be divided into two parts. The first part is an emulsification step, uh, while the second part is a solvent extraction step. So the emulsification step is schematized on the left-hand side of this slide. Uh, and uh, uh, basically, you the first thing to do is to dissolve your PLGA into some sort of organic solvent. Uh, and in particular, dichloromethane is quite a popular choice uh, because of its uh, slightly solubility in uh, water. Uh, then once you have this PLGA dichloromethane solution, you feed it uh, through the central channel of your microfluidic chip, which is schematized here on the left. And uh, at the junction, uh, the PLGA dichloromethane solution meets the uh, continuous phase, uh, which enables the formation of the emulsion of the droplets. Uh, for this application, the continuous phase uh, that is used uh, is aqueous-based, uh, 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 which uh, is basically water that, contain, that contains some sort of stabilizer. Uh, a popular choice is uh, PBA, uh, but uh, here at Dolomite Microfluidics we use uh, Aquaphase, which is a stabilizer that uh, we developed specifically for uh, the PLG application and you can find more information about that on our website, of course. So uh, after the fluids uh, meet at the junction, uh, then these very monodispersed uniform droplets are formed, uh, and uh, they are collected uh, usually in uh, an excess of your continuous phase, and uh, then we move to the second part of the process, which is the solvent extraction, which you can see schematized on the right-hand side. So, because dichloromethane is slightly soluble in water, what happens is that dichloromethane uh, slowly migrates uh, into the water and then uh, it evaporates uh, into the atmosphere. And uh, if you put a drop of this emulsion on a microscope slide, this process takes uh, only a few minutes. Otherwise, uh, if you're making a larger batch, it might take uh, up to, to a few hours to make absolutely sure that uh, you uh, eliminate all the dichloromethane from uh, your product. So here you can see uh, some real images of the process. Uh, in particular, on the left-hand side, you can see the uh, one of our microfluidic chips uh, making uh, PLGA in dichloromethane droplets. Uh, as you can see, the droplets are uh, very uniform uh, and uh, they form readily at the junction. Uh, this chip in particular is uh, one of our 100 micron uh, 3D uh, pore uh, microfluidic chips and the 3D pore structure makes sure that uh, the PLGA does not stick to the chip's uh, walls. Uh, so the um, uniformity and monodispersity is maintained. Uh, then uh, these droplets were collected onto a micro microscope slide and uh, uh, we observed the solvent extraction process happening. Uh, and you can see these on the right hand side of the slide. So if you read the images from the top left corner uh, to the bottom right corner, you can see the PLGA dichloromethane droplets slowly shrinking uh, until they reach uh, their final uh, size uh, in the top, uh, sorry, bottom right corner where uh, you are left with only uh, solid uh, PLGA beads which contain no dichloromethane. So, uh, as I said, on a microscope slide, uh, this process only takes uh, a few minutes. Uh, these images were taken uh, like 30 seconds apart, so it's going to be in total just a couple of minutes. So, this is how the process looks like uh, for uh, simple PLGA uh, beads. Uh, so, let's now move on to uh, the core shell structure. So here 
you can see a schematic of uh, how to make uh, the core shell uh, PLG microparticle. Uh, the technique is very, very similar to what I explained before, uh, but instead of using one chip, you are this time using two chips. Uh, and uh, you, can, you can see a schematic here at the top uh, left side of this slide. The first chip is actually used to generate the first emulsion, uh, which is uh, your, uh, your API, your active pharmaceutical ingredient is dissolved into uh, water or some aqua solution that you would like to use. And uh, uh, we, it's fed uh, through uh, the central channel of the first chip. And in this case, we use uh, PLGA in the chloromethan uh, as a continuous phase. So uh, this allows us to generate a primary emulsion of tiny water droplets, uh, which contain your uh, hydrophilic drug into a PLGA dichloromethan uh, uh, solution stream. And uh, uh, this primary emulsion is then fed to a second chip using just PTFE tubing, where the secondary emulsion is formed. And uh, in this chip, we use uh, aqua phase as continuous phase, as I showed you uh, before. And this enables the formation of the secondary emulsion, as you can see. Uh, after that, the extraction process, the dichloromethane extraction process uh, looks exactly uh, as I uh, showed you before. There is nothing different, so uh, as I said, it's very similar. And this enables to obtain uh, particles, uh, uh, very, very monodispersed and uniform microparticles. And you can see an example on the uh, right-hand side of this slide. So. Uh, here uh, you can see an example. Uh, you can see some real images of the of the process, uh, what it looks like on uh, real chips. So in the top side uh, of the slide, you can see the first chip where the primary emulsion is formed, which again is your uh, aqueous uh, droplets into a PLG dichloromethane solution stream, which is used as continuous phase. Uh, and uh, this primary emulsion, which is formed in this chip, is then fed to the second chip, which you can see in the top side, uh, sorry, bottom side of this slide, uh, where the secondary emulsion is formed. And in order to drive these fluids, we use uh, pressure pumps. Uh, you can see uh, an image of one of our pressure pumps at the uh, top left corner of this slide. Uh, uh, but uh, I will show you uh, <clears throat> I will show you the the real uh, pump uh, after the presentation. So here you can see some results, an example of the results we can obtain using the technique the technique I just showed you. Uh, on the left hand side, you can see some uh, fifty micron PLG droplets uh, which contain. Uh, 14, uh, in, uh, 14 uh, micrometer uh, diameter inner droplets, uh, which is your aqueous phase. While on the fifth, uh, on the sorry, on the right hand side, you can see uh, again 50 micrometer PLGA droplets. So the uh, the diameter of the uh, PLGAB is, is exactly the same, but this time uh, they contain uh, three micrometer uh, aqueous droplets inside. So that uh, just uh, gives you an idea of the kind of control you can have when uh, forming these microparticles. Uh, uh, because overall, um, this microfluidic technology enables you to have very high monodispersity of both the primary and the secondary emulsion. Also, uh, using this technique, you have precise control over the number and dimension of the inner aqueous droplets that you are trying to encapsulate. It is also very easy to control the PLGA shelf thickness, which uh, can just be controlled by changing the PLGA concentration into your PLGA dichloromethane uh, solution. 
and overall uh, you have uh, precise control over the amount uh, of the aqueous phase encapsulated which is actually uh, your goal prob probably uh, having uh, the right amount of active pharmaceutical ingredients uh, encapsulated into the your PLGA bead. So uh, what I just showed you was our single channel system uh, of which you can see an example here on the left hand side. Uh, this is one of our microfluidic system setup uh, and uh, uh, is uh, here we are using one of our single channel uh, chips which means there is only one channel on each chip and uh, this is great for research purposes when uh, you are still invest investigating your materials and uh, you still uh, don't know what uh, your process look will look like uh, and uh, so that's uh, that's perfect for this purpose and also uh, if you have uh, if you're using quite expensive reagents or uh, uh, expensive uh, drugs uh, you can minimize the amount of material you use using the uh, single channel chips however once you have uh, figured out your process and uh, you know what uh, the steps look like you probably want to move to some sort of production scale and you can do so by uh, using our high throughput system, which we call TELOS. Uh, in uh, microfluidics, the way we scale up is by numbering up. So we increase, we just increase the number of channels and uh, our uh, TELOS system uh, uses chips that have seven channels on each chip and you can put up to 10 chips together uh, using the manifold that you can see uh, on the right of this slide. So in total, you will have increased your uh, production rate uh, by 70 times, which is uh, quite important, of course. So if you want more information about our TELO system, you can find some information on our website, of course, uh, uh, or uh, you can contact us directly uh, and we are happy to go through uh, the system with you. So uh, what I just showed you uh, was uh, the technique uh, to make uh, PLG core shell microparticles uh, with an aqueous core for hydrophilic drug encapsulation, uh, but uh, we, uh, you can also use our systems for uh, to make other, uh, other different uh, kind of particles and uh, because the system is very flexible you uh, can keep everything the pumps and the microscope and the interfaces the connection you just have to use a different chip and by just using a different chip you can make for example alginate particles or liposomes or uh, uh, double emulsions uh, which are widely used for uh, things like cell encapsul encapsulation or uh, PLG nanoparticles and many others. Or if you're interested in anything outside of uh, these particles, uh, uh, we, uh, we are happy to undertake a proof of principle study and uh, help you develop a process to make uh, your particular product. So to conclude, uh, we demonstrated that our dolomite equipment can be successfully used to produce core shell polymeric microparticles that can find application in many different areas, for example, hydrophilic drug encapsulation. The final particle size can be accurately controlled in the region between 15 and 50 micrometers in diameter. However, if you're interested in anything outside this range, uh, you can just contact us and we can discuss some custom solution. Uh, the process will look exactly the same. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll just need to design a slightly different chip to accommodate your uh, needs. Uh, our dolomite uh, processes can be scaled up to pilot plant quite easily uh, using our high throughput uh, system, which we call TELOS. 
uh, if you want to know more about this application, you can, of course, visit our website in the multiple emotion uh, section. Uh, and uh, if you're interest, interested in anything else, uh, on our website, there is also information about other different applications that we uh, tackled in the past. Thank you. So let's now move to the the actual system. So here you can see, as I said, an example of uh, one of our microfluidic systems. At the moment, this is set up to uh, make PLGA uh, crucial uh, microparticles with uh, an aqueous core. Uh, but all of our systems uh, look very similar because, as I said, the core of the technology is the microfluidic chip, which I will show you a bit later. So uh, these are uh, pressure pumps, which I mentioned before, and uh, are used to drive the fluids to the microfluidic chip. Uh, and uh, they, uh, they use pressure, they are called pressure pump, because of course they use pressure to drive the fluid uh, to the chip. So this is quite uh, useful uh, because there is no moving, uh, moving parts uh, inside, inside the pump. Uh, so there's no syringe, nothing, but the, your, uh, your chemicals are just uh, in, into this uh, chamber, which uh, where you can pop one of these vials, uh, which contain your solution. So there is no risk of cross-contamination or, uh, or anything. You just uh, open the chamber, put the violin and uh, your uh, uh, reagent is completely isolated from the pump. And then the pressure just drives this, uh, the, the, your reagents uh, to uh, the microfluidic chips using these uh, PTFE tubings, which are resistant to most solvents, to be honest. Uh, so once we are here, we can visualize whatever is happening on, uh, uh, inside your microfluidic chip using this high-speed microscope. Uh, and this is, of course, quite important to visualize your microparticles forming uh, because, I don't know, maybe you want to measure them or see if the production is uh, proceeding as you planned and other things. And uh, the microscope is connected to uh, our software, which is called the Flow Control Cent uh, Center, or FCC which enables you to uh, visualize uh, whatever is happening on the chip using the microscope, but also to take pictures or short videos of, uh, of your uh, process happening. Uh, and uh, you will, can also use the same software, the Flow Control Center, to uh, control the pumps. So you can uh, set a certain pressure if you want to work in uh, pressure mode, or you can set a flow rate if you want to work in flow rate mode. So uh, it's, uh, it's quite uh, straightforward and uh, easy to use. And it's quite handy to have everything in uh, one software. So we'll be able to uh, overlook your process uh, using just the FCC. Uh, if uh, oh, the uh, chip itself is contained into this uh, interface, which we call the H interface, uh, which kind of holds the chip in place and enables connection uh, with uh, uh, the uh, PTFE tubings. So uh, the chip is contained here, as you can see, and uh, it's, uh, it's quite easy uh, to take it in and out of the H interface, you just have to unscrew this bit and then this, this bit and then the chip will just pop out here. As you can see, uh, and this is the core of the technology. And the system, as I said, is very, very flexible and uh, this uh, chip can be easily replaced with a different one. So if you're, in, uh, if you're interested in uh, a different application, say you don't wanna make uh, PLGA core shell particles anymore, uh, but you're interested in uh, liposomes or alginate or 
PLG nanoparticle instead, you just have to change this bit, the microfluidic chip, uh, take a different one which uh, was developed especially for the application, uh, pop, in, pop it in the interface, screw it back in here. And uh, you are ready to go. So it's very, very flexible, very uh, easy to use and straightforward. So if we can zoom out a little bit. So at the moment, the system is set up uh, for to run a single channel. However, as I said, uh, if you're interested in uh, increasing your production rate, you can use uh, one of these, uh, our uh, high throughput system, uh, which we call Telos. And uh, it, it looks a little bit like this. Uh, this is a manifold for, uh, uh, two, for, for two chips. So the chips go actually here. And uh, it's uh, quite easy to use and you can have up to 10 stuck together, so 10 chips working together in parallel. And uh, if uh, you don't want to be uh, limited by the amount of reagent you can uh, pop into this vial, uh, then you, there are other solutions. You can connect uh, our pressure pumps to larger reservoirs like this, uh, which can hold up to half a liter of reagent and in this way you can do longer production runs and uh, yeah that's uh, more or less what I wanted to show you for uh, uh, for the system uh, now the system is running uh, to make uh, PLG crucial microparticles as I said uh, and uh, if we move to the software I will be able to show you how the production actually it looks like and uh, what uh, the, the core shell uh, microparticle, uh, how the core shell uh, microparticles are forming uh, in, the, in the chip and how the software looks like in general to control the pumps. So if we can move to the software bit. Yeah, here you can see the system running and making uh, multiple emulsions of PLGA with uh, uh, containing uh, water, tiny uh, water droplets. Here you can see in the center channel the primary emulsion. This is the second, the second chip. So here we're forming the uh, secondary emulsion already. In the center channel, you can see the primary emulsion coming through. And uh, from the bottom and the top channel, there is the aqua phase, which is our continuous phase coming. And at the junction, uh, the droplets form. Uh, and as you can see, the droplet formation is uh, quite stable. Uh, all the droplets uh, look uh, very uh, identical to one another. And uh, the droplet formation is uh, quite stable. Uh, and uh, there is no real difference between one droplet and uh, and another even if we go through the outlet channel a little bit so at the moment i'm moving the microscope to uh, towards the outlet of the microfluidic chip and you can see there is no merging of the droplets uh, and everything is very very stable uh, if we have a look at the other uh, boxes of uh, the software here, in the top right corner, you can see the uh, pump controlling the aqua phase, which is the continuous phase for, uh, for our process. Uh, at the moment, uh, this is set up to work in pressure mode, which means I've set up the pressure to be 500 millibar. And uh, uh, this gives me a uh, flow rate of approximately 70 microliters per minute. Uh, I can uh, decide to move to flow rate mode where the I can actually control the flow rate. So say I don't want to work at 70 microliters per minute anymore, but I want to do 50 or 100. 
then I can easily go to flow rate mode and change that and uh, um, just decide what kind of flow rate I want to use. We are, we are a bit out of focus, okay. So uh, in the bottom left corner, you can see the pump controlling the uh, PLGA dichloromethane uh, solution, which is coming through the center channel. And at the moment, this is running at about five microliters per minute. Again, this is in pressure mode, but uh, it is just as easy to uh, use the flow rate uh, control mode and uh, just decide what flow rate you want to use and go there. Uh, there is no actual limit to which flow rate you can use. Uh, it really depends on your fluidic path and uh, your pressure. The pressure, the, our pressure pumps are rated up to 10 bars, so which is uh, quite uh, quite high for uh, for this kind of devices. So uh, it's um, uh, it's uh, it's more than enough. So as uh, we are seeing uh, now, with the droplet productions. Uh, production is still continuing as uh, before. Uh, it's quite stable. Now it has been running for a few minutes and uh, it's really stable and the droplets look very uniform and monodispersed. So if uh, you have any, uh, any question about the software, uh, we'll, we'll answer that in a moment. So if, uh, uh, if we can uh, move to the Q&A session. Uh, so, yeah, thank you, thank you very much for for watching. And uh, if you have any question, uh, we'll be answering that uh, in a moment. Hope you find the webinar interesting. And uh, if you uh, want to know more, uh, visit our website or contact us directly. So let's move to the Q&A now. <clears throat> 